Hey everybody, before we get started today, I want to go ahead and remind you that you can become a member to my YouTube channel now for just 99 cents. And if you're watching me on Utreon or Odyssey, you can become a member over there as well. What we're going to cover today is pretty simple. I have done a lot of different distro reviews with distributions that come with the KDE desktop environment. And it never fails. My comments fill up with, what is the best distribution with the KDE desktop environment? So that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to give you what I believe are my top three and in no certain order. And at the end of that, I'm going to also plug in my video that covers KDE customization, how to make your desktop look kind of like mine. Without any further to do, here's the video. So what we're going to do today, guys, is we're going to take a look at a distro that I've had recommended uh, many times in my comments. It's Big Linux. Now, if you zip on over to their website, which is biglinux.com.br, you'll come to this page right here. Now, Firefox automatically translated it for me, but I do know on a couple other browsers, if you don't have a translation add-on on your browser, it can be difficult to read. This one did it automatically, so if you're using Firefox, you shouldn't have a problem. I'm actually using Fire Dragon. But you come over to Big Linux's website, and it just basically states that this distribution is derived from Manjaro repositories. Now, this has went through several different facelifts over the last two or three years. It was based on different distributions, but now it is based on Manjaro. And when you go to download it, they actually give you three different options. You've got Big Linux that's got kernel 5.10. So if you've got some older hardware or you're, you're trying to do some things in a more stable environment, that might be for you. They're recommended, which is kernel 5.15, and then they've got kernel 5.19. What I'm going to be taking a look at today is kernel 5.19, and we're going to go ahead and come down here. You can download it or get it through Torrent, and then it breaks down your main programs, KDE, Plasma, LibreOffice, GIMP, Firefox, and Brave. And then you've got some Ventoy download, Belina Etcher download, or UNet Booten download. They give you links to those right there, so if you want to burn it to a USB and boot into it, you can. And then down here on settings, it shows you the minimum requirement, 64-bit Intel or AMD, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 8 gigabytes of storage space, and then live USB mode. How to choose the Big Linux version you want to use, and then see how to save Big Linux on your USB stick using Ventoy. And then if you do go up top, you've got download support, photos, videos, news, others contribute and contact. That pretty much covers their website. I'll be sure to link that in the description below. So if you like what you see, you can go over, download it and give it a try for yourself. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to close out of this and we're going to open it up in boxes. Now, the reason I'm showing it actually loading up instead of me just plugging on over to the desktop is I want to show you some interesting and neat things that are coming with Big Linux that you don't get in other distributions, or you do get in some distributions, but not that many. You kind of get a choice of what layout you want, and it's got a good splash screen, it's got a good boot screen, and I'm only giving it two gigabytes of RAM, so it may take just a little bit to load up. It is what it is. Now, I do want to say that if you're using Manjaro, or you're wanting to get away from a different distribution or something like that and get into something a little bit more interesting with maybe a little bit more eye candy that doesn't mean a lot to some people but it does to others big linux is actually a good looking distribution now one thing i do not like and you'll see here in a second is that you do get a certain setup that still includes the latte dock now with so many questions around the latte dock right now is it going to stay up? Is somebody else going to pick up the development of it? That right there kind of seems iffy to me. Maybe switch it over to Cairo, but that's just me. You might disagree with me. If you do, please let me know in the comments below. So once it finally boots up, you actually got to pick your language. I'm going to go ahead and pick English United States. And then it's going to let you choose a theme. Do you want to go with the breeze, breeze dark, fluent solid dark, or fluent solid? And then you've got uh, Fluent, Fluent Dark, Materia, and Materia Dark. I'm going to go ahead and just stick with Breeze Dark. And then right over here, you get to actually pick the way your desktop's laid out. You've got the classic look, your classic KDE. Then you've got kind of a K-Unity, which is a take on the Unity from Ubuntu years ago. Then you've got a new layout. You've got the next G. 
and we're going to scroll down you've got a modern and then you've got desk x now you can change these once you're on desktop in virtual machine they're kind of laggy i'll show you that anyway but just know that if you put it on a usb or you're running it on bare metal it'll run a lot better so i'm going to go ahead and just go with next g and we will go ahead and let that boot up and show us what we're getting i like the splash screen i like the background i like the way they integrate the big logo into the center of the background i just i like the overall look of this distribution but what we are going to need to do is we're going to need to zip on over here and we're going to need to adjust the actual resolution of the distro so we can actually see what's going on so i'm going to go down here and go ahead and click on big and look for settings and we will go ahead and go to see if that's manjaro setting manager if that'll let us take care of what we need to there's hardware time and date let's close i just need regular old settings so where's just regular old settings settings system settings there it was why didn't you guys point that out to me i guess i need to put my glasses on so i can see what's going on let's go ahead and go to display and there's the display configuration let's go ahead and click that open and let's go ahead and change that to 1080 let's go ahead and apply that and there it is right there let's go ahead and keep that zip that over there and close out of that as you can see right here you kind of get a nice little dock down here and like i said i've only got two gigabytes of ram issued to this in gnome boxes so it might be a little jerky and jumpy but if you put it on a usb or you're running on bare hardware it's going to be a lot faster so what i'm going to do real quick i'm going to go ahead and open up dolphin and yes you get the global menu up here and then you've got dolphin right here and like I said, it's got the wobbly windows with only two gigabytes of RAM. It's a little jerky. Let's go ahead and look at something right now. Let's see what we're running system-wide. Let's see. Where's it at? Cases guard. Let's go ahead and see what kind of resources we're using on this one. System load. We're running about uh, 0.75 gigabytes. That's not too bad. Uh, with Dolphin open, and we're running, obviously, this is Latte. Let's go up here and right-click. Yeah, see, that's the Latte dock. So you do have the Latte dock running in the background, and you're only using about 0.75 gigabytes of 2 gigabytes that I have issued to the machine. Now, what I'm going to say here is, with Latte dock running, compared to Garuda, because I am I had to reinstall Garuda because you all are familiar with the problems that I had with Nobara, but I reinstalled Garuda, and Garuda, when it had Latte dock running in the background, was at about 1.2, 1.3 gigabytes. And when I got rid of Latte, it actually dropped down to 0.75. So right here with Latte Dock running in the background, you've got 0.75. So that's not too bad right there on resource usage. And we're only using about 1% of the CPU. Now the wobbly windows will probably make that spike up a little bit, but not too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that and close out of that. And we'll kind of take a look around here. You can just see you've got the control center over here. This is what I want to point out to you because you can go to the control center. And when it pops up, you've got a lot of different things you can do over here. You've got themes, desktop, and settings, restore the program configuration, system and hardware information. So if you wanted to change your theme, you could come right over here and go to open. And it's going to give you the same options you got at boot. Now I'm going to leave the theme where it is. You can go to desktop. That's the classic KDE look. And then you've got the KUnity. Then you've got the next G. Then you've got the new. I'm going to try modern and see what happens here. And that popped up. Uh, I actually kind of like that better than the dock. I think I'll leave that right there because I'm not a big fan of the global menu. Scratch that. I do like the global menu when there's a distribution that already has a top panel. But I'm not a big fan of the top panel. So if I can get away from that, I generally do. So I think I will leave this right here. But you can see over here, you can change your desktops. You've got six different choices there. You've got different themes you can change it to. And you could also probably install some other themes. So that's pretty neat. I like that. It comes out of the box with that. So that's pretty impressive. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And then you've got your network and internet. Connect to the internet. Connect to internet using Android. Integration with Google Drive and OwnCloud. Uh, customize. Application style. So this is kind of a system settings, but it's been barred down into their control center with their choices and things that you can change there. Now, it's got a little moon down here. If you click on that, okay, so you can switch. I like that. You can switch it from a light to dark with one click. 
Okay, let's go over here. You've got region and language, multimedia, audio mixer, equalizer, sound and microphone, Helvum, accounts, privacy. Let's go look at about. That's what I wanted to look about. Let's see. Let's go to Info Center. Let's pull that up. And what are we looking at right here? You've got KDE Plasma 5.25.5, .5, Frameworks 5.97, QT version 5.15, and then you've got Kernel version 5.19.7. Manjaro. So if you're somebody that likes Manjaro, but you're wanting to change a pace, this is definitely the distribution for you. And if you're somebody that is wanting to go to an Arch-based system with a little bit more control over looks and things that you can do with it, you might want to choose this one over Manjaro. Now, what I would worry about is if Big Linux suffers from some of the problems that you get with a Manjaro distribution when there's updates sometimes. You have some issues there. I don't know if those carry over, but it would take a little bit of using. And this might go on my list, guys. I was considering going with OpenSUSE after my Nabara fiasco, and I might end up giving this one a shot. I don't know yet, but we will see. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then you've got privacy, server, devices, system, development. You've got a nice little control panel here. I really do like that. Now, what I want to know is if they're piggybacking off of Manjaro. Does that mean they have Paymax? So let's add and remove web apps, add and remove software. Let's go look at that first. So let's go ahead and open that up. And you're running basically Paymax. So what you want to do is go over here first. And I want to see if they have the AUR. Okay, they do have AUR. You can enable it. Okay, it's already enabled out of the box. Okay, guys, so AUR is enabled out of the box, and you also have Flatpak enabled out of the box. So if we go to General, can you go ahead and you can use mirrors from Worldwide. You can actually refresh those mirrors. Okay, well, let me close out of that. So if we do a search, can we do a search for something like OBS Studio? There's OBS Studio. Let's go ahead and click on that, and it's right there. Now, that's one thing I do like about this is there have been many different Arch distributions that use Paymac that when I run them in a live environment, you can't actually look up software because it actually has to update and then install a bunch of other data and dependencies before you can even do searches for software. So I like that. Let's see. Do they have GIMP? They do have GIMP. It's right there. You click on it and it pops right up. So you're going to be using Paymac and the AUR to install software. So that's definitely a plus. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Now let's go back over here and it looked like it had add and remove web apps. No web app added. So if we added a web app, so what could we call it? So let's just say YouTube.com. Let's name it YouTube. Let's go ahead and detect name and icon. So it'll detect the name YouTube web app icon. It automatically gave it to you. And can we go ahead, YouTube TV mode? I don't want to do that. Let's go ahead and add it. The web app has been successfully added, so we can close out of that. Now, is this added to our regular menu or is it just, okay, so it's added right there. So if I click on that and there is our YouTube app. Okay, so it's using uh, Brave Browser to open up our web app, our web app, YouTube app. We'll go ahead and maximize that. And like I said, there's going to be a little stutter there. I've only got two gigabytes of RAM issued to the machine. So you're going to have a little bit of that. Uh, I would really like to run this in a live mode. This might be the next distro I try to run as a daily driver. I'm going to be quite honest. And my question, let's go over here. Let's close out of that. Now, if I go over here... And I put in YouTube. Can we right click and pin that? Or let's open it back up. Okay, pop right back up. Now can I right click and pin that to task manager and then close. So there's my YouTube web app. It's right there on my panel. So this is Big Linux Web Apps Manager. So if you somebody that's used Linux Mint and you're used to their, their web app uh, application that they have, this is something that's along those lines. And it's just bringing it over to an Arch distro uh, that's based on Manjaro. So I, I kind of like that application. That's pretty impressive. So we'll close out of that. Let's go ahead and open this back up. And then you've got games, graphics. Okay. 
So my question, can you change Edit Big Linux Application Launcher? Okay, that's just to change the logo or the icon, I'm sorry. Okay, so there's no changing your menu. I guess that would be different on different desktop themes that you picked. Um, configure your desktop and wallpaper. Let's see what kind of wallpapers we got involved here. Oh, they got some pretty wallpapers. Let's see. Let's try the Antelope Canyon. I like that. That's neat. Guys, I'm pretty impressed. Big Linux, everybody that chimed in on my comments and told me to take a look at it, thank you because it is definitely a decent looking distribution and it might be something that I take a look at, maybe even test drive for 90 days. What we're going to cover today is an operating system that was released not too long ago. Most of y'all right now, if you're in the Linux community, know who System76 is. System76 makes some incredible hardware, but at the same time, they release their own software that goes along with that hardware. Pop! OS is a very functional operating system, and it's a very beautiful operating system on top of that. It comes pre-packaged with NVIDIA drivers and just really makes your life easy. Well, there's another company out there that makes some impressive hardware, which is Tuxedo Computers. They have notebooks, computers, and PCs. You pretty much can get everything you want. You can build it the way you want. You can go on your notebooks from 10 to 14 inch, 15.6 inch, 17.3. You can adjust it for deep learning AI, gaming notebooks. They give you a great opportunity to get hardware that supports the open source mentality. And not just notebooks, you can also get computers too. Now, for the longest time, they've run their custom OS that comes with all of their hardware. You weren't able to download it and use it on anything but their hardware. But recently, Tuxedo has made it available for you to download, which is the Tuxedo OS. It's based on Ubuntu 22.04 long-term support, and it's really a nice operating system. It's on the KDE desktop, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. I'll include all of these links in the description below, so that way if you like what you see, you can go over and download it. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to boot Tuxedo up in a virtual machine. Now, I do want to point out, once you download it and boot into it, if you're booting directly from a USB, you'll want to pick the first option. Now, if you download the ISO and you want to run it in a virtual machine, you've got to come down here to boot from DVD slash VM. That's just the way it's set up. And once you do that, you just hit enter and then it will start to boot. And there is your splash screen, Tuxedo OS, powered by KDE Plasma. And it's going to pop up right here. And before you do anything, most people will say it's not in English or it's not in your language. That is true, but it's real quick to get by this because we're not installing it. We're just running it in a virtual machine, but we have to set our locales up to begin with so it'll function properly. So what you'll want to do is come down here, click on this, and I've got to find American English, which is right there. So I will click on that and click Next. And then my location, I'll just pick over here and click Next. And then pick your proper keyboard. I'll go ahead and click that. I know that seems like you're getting ready to install, but you're not. It's just setting it up to run it in a VM. Right now it's configuring the locales. We'll let it do that and then we'll get to the desktop. Okay, and once the locales are configured, you're brought to the desktop. I love the wallpaper, I love the background. You guys know I point that out every time we do any kind of distro review for the simple fact that I think it's important. It's not only important to have a functional OS, but also one that is beautiful. Now it does come with quite a few wallpapers. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and we'll open those up. And once those populate, you'll scroll down and you'll see that it's got pretty much all of the KDE wallpapers you're used to. But then when you get down a little further, you get a lot of tuxedo wallpapers and they're all beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and probably pick that one and apply it. That is a good looking wallpaper and I think I will stick with that one. So if you do download it, make sure you take a look at all these beautiful wallpapers. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this and we're gonna look at the meat and potatoes of this operating system. You've got your single panel on bottom because yes, it is KDE. And you've got your date and time over here and then all your icons right here, internet, USB, Bluetooth, battery, sound. And then of course your hidden icons which will have notifications, updates, clipboard, lock key status and things like that. First thing I wanna do is zip on over to settings and we're gonna scroll down and look about this system. 
And what you will notice right off the bat is it's KDE 5.24.6. It's not the newest version of KDE, but it is solid. And it is Tuxedo OS 22.04, QT version 5.15.3. And then, of course, kernel version 5.15.0-148, Tuxedo 64-bit. I'm running it on an AMD Ryzen in VirtualBox. Now, I do want to point out real quick, I did try to run this in GNOME boxes, and for some reason it was giving me issues. I can run Ubuntu all day long in it. For some reason I was having problems with Tuxedo, so I just flipped on over to VirtualBox. You can go up here to Appearance, and if you wanted to set to a dark mode, I guess you would have to pick a whole different theme. So I'm not going to switch that right now. I'm just going to go back. And these are your KDE settings. You guys have seen me go over these a hundred times, so I'm not going to beat those over the head. But I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. So we're going to come down here to the Discover Software Center, and let's open that up. Let it populate here, because I want to see where we're getting our applications from. So let's just click on Krita. And right here, let's make that bigger so you can see. And we will go Sources. We can get from FlatHub and from Ubuntu. So you're going to be downloading from Ubuntu repositories and FlatHub. There are no snaps in this, which I kind of agree with. I'm not a big fan of snaps. And then... You should be able to just do a search. Let's see if we can do a search for something like OBS Studio. Hit enter and see if it finds it. And there it is right there. So we click on it. And then the sources for it are from Ubuntu and from FlatHub. So that's awesome. That's where you'll get all your applications. It does show that we need six updates. We're not going to do that right now. So I want to go ahead and close out of that. And then we can come over here to the file manager, which should be Dolphin. I do like the theme that they're using. I like the silver and red. I do really like that. And then scroll down here. So that's your Dolphin file manager. It's really nice. Uh, it lets you get things done, stays out of your way. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then, of course, we have Firefox. Now, right here, you've got the Tuxedo Control Center. Let's go ahead and open that up. This is going to be more or less used for Tuxedo hardware. You've got your system monitor right here. Now, I don't know if you put this on bare metal, if you're going to get an actual readout here. I really want to say this is uh, supported just for models that they build. We can come down here. It does say that we have four cores. And then you've got profiles right here you can set. Default, cool and breezy, power save, new profile, default custom profile. Then you do have some tools. Aquarius. Aquarius is for their hardware as well. And then use profiles would be default and default. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And let's come back over here and open the app launcher. Now I want to make this bigger so that way you guys can see. So let's go with the application dashboard and let's go ahead and make that bigger. Now we've got recent, all, you've got discover, dolphin, emoji selector, Gwynview, info center, install tuxedo, Kate, KCAL, KDE. So you're going to have your KDE suite of applications, KMines, console. Let's go ahead and open up console real quick. Oh, uh, that's pretty interesting. I kind of like that. Got the little fishes swimming by. So file, new window. Let's go HTOP. It does have HTOP. Right here it says we're using 2.15 gigabytes of the three gigs that I have issued to it. Now, that's going to give me a different number than what I have on System Monitor. Let's go ahead and look System Monitor up and open that up. And on System Monitor, it shows that we're using 2.5. Now, what applications does it show in the background? It shows that we got Discover still open, so let's quit that. Okay, let's quit. Now, that should drop down a little bit. That should put us, no, it still got us at 2.5 and then 2.3. Now, I know when you run this on bare metal, it's going to be a lot lighter because when I was using it earlier, it was running about 1.1 to 1.2 gigabytes. Now, I don't know with me clicking a while ago to actually download something, if that's still running in the background. It might be. You do have some updates that are due here, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And let's go ahead and bring that down and close HTOP. Let's go back over to our applications. You've got games, K-Mahjong, K-Mines, graphics. You've got LibreOffice Draw, Ocular, Krita, Internet. You've got Firefox, KDE Connect, KTorrent for your torrent downloads. VLC is your 
media player out of the box. You've got LibreOffice that's installed out of the box. Science and Math, Settings, System. You've got Discover, Dolphin, Info Center, KDE Partition Manager. You do have the Muon Package Manager. Let's open that up. I love this because I'm really a person that enjoyed using Synaptic for a lot of what I used to do. Let's go ahead and make this bigger, especially when I was on Linux Mint. Now, this is a lot like Synaptic Package Manager. This is more of a type search install type situation. So let's say you were looking for something like, uh, let's do OBS Studio again. OBS Studio, hit enter. It'll bring it up. Let's look down through here. OBS Studio, what you would do is click on it. Then you could do installation right here. And this is coming from Canonical as well. So this would be in Ubuntu repository. So you've got two different ways to install software on the system. One is through Discover and the other is through Muon Package Manager. I would probably use this more often than not because I just love type search and install software manager. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. We'll go back over here. Where were we at? Settings and system. Start disk creator, system monitor, tuxedo control center. Virtual box is already installed out of the box. That's nice. Uh, tuxedo install. We've already looked at the control center. Utilities, Kate, KCALC, KWrite, Spectacle, and Power Sleep. Well, I will say this. Uh, I was a big fan a long time ago of Linux Mint when it had the KDE version. Uh, this looks like this could definitely be something on par or maybe even better. I just like the fact that you can get something that's uh, Ubuntu-based, long-term support, and it's on KDE Desktop. Just wanted to make a real quick video to basically cover my last three months on Garuda Linux. About a month ago, I did a video showing an in-depth install, and I think about a month and a half, two months ago, I did a video saying it's the greatest Linux experience I've ever had. Now I want to revisit that. Can I still say today that it's the easiest operating system and cleanest feel that I've had ever using Linux? Now... Having said that, there's a lot of things I take into account. The first of those is resource usage. Generally, when I use an operating system, I don't really get too picky about the resource usage. But one of the things that really pulled me into Garuda, and if you look at this screenshot right here, at rest, with nothing running in the background, I'm using about 700 megabytes of memory. 730.8 to be exact. Now, people would ask, why am I screenshotting this? Well, at present, I'm running dual monitors. I've got OBS in the background, and I do have console open in the background. So if I switch over to that monitor real quick, that's what you'll see on your screen now is the second screen. I've got the console open right here, and then I have OBS running up here, and then I've got, of course, my image viewer on the first screen. So I'll go ahead and switch back to my first screen. And... Being lightweight is really important to me, but it's not so important that I want to use an XFCE or maybe a window manager that gets me down to two or 300 megs because I'm not really that crazy about keeping that number that low. What I do say, though, is those of you that are running Windows 10 or Windows 11 know that when you're open just to desktop, you're running anywhere from 2.7 gigs of RAM all the way up to 3.3 gigs of RAM. Now, I have people all the time tell me in my comments, hey, unused RAM is wasted RAM. Well, I agree and disagree with you. If I'm opening up applications, say it be OBS, like I have going on my second monitor right now, yes, use my RAM. That's what it's there for. But just to be open up in desktop, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. So that's one of the things I wanted to point out. Another thing I want to point out, is the fact that I truly love Fire Dragon. Now, once you open Fire Dragon up, I have it set to open up to the Cirex search engine. Now, I do want to point something out. If you want to use Fire Dragon and Cirex as your search engine, there's a couple of tweaks you're going to have to make. Like right now, let's say we were doing a search for Linux, and you bring that up and go over to Images. You'll see that you've got images that just aren't loading. And this bothers me sometimes, especially if I'm in a in a design mode and I'm doing a thumbnail or I'm doing a wallpaper and I've got to have images that have transparency included with them or just images in general. 
this happens. Let me show you how to fix that. All you gotta do is go up here to preferences, go down here to privacy, and disable the proxy on your images. Image proxy disabled. Go ahead and save. Go back home. Now what you wanna do is, let's do a search for Linux. Put that in the screen. Then go to images, and all of them should load pretty smooth and pretty quickly. So you don't have an issue there. That's just a quick tweak you can do. Now, another thing, if you go over here and do home, and let's do a search real quick. I'm just going to put eBuzz. I should have put eBuzz Central. Let me put eBuzz Central in there. And we go to images. That looks good. Go back to general. You'll see over here your search URL is clear. Now, sometimes, let's go over here. If you go to preferences, you can go to engines. You can assign engines. I'm pulling right now things from Bing, from DuckDuckGo, from Quant. Uh, now, you could add Google if you wanted to, but here's some of the issues you might have with that. Let's go ahead and go down here and click Save. Now, let's go Home. Now, you want to go to eBuzz Central. And it'll show over here that we had some engines that timed out. Brave crashed and Google suspended too many requests. That happens sometimes here. So what you do is you just go over to preferences, go to your engines, turn off Brave, turn off Google. So now I'm getting them from Quant, DuckDuckGo, and Bing. And Bing has some pretty good searches, but the key here, guys, is that you're getting the results from these search engines, but you're not sharing your personal information. So let's go ahead and go to save, go back to home. Now, when you do that same search, you can pull it up. It'll be clear over here. You have no red flags. Now, what you want to do is make sure that, let's say we want to visit uh, MX Linux. Now, this also has, if you look up here, you block origins up here. That'll block any trackers that might pop up. You can click on it and it'll show you since install, I've blocked 869. Domains connected, 10 out of 10, blocked on this page, 3. Now, here's what's weird is because this is MX Linux, but there were three trackers on this page. So that goes to show you, I know for a fact that MX Linux isn't tracking people, that these have been integrated into the web and it's just things you want to block. Now it shows that we've blocked 7. So let's go click it, blocked on this page, 7. So there have been 7 attempts to track me on this page. Just something to keep your eye on, guys and keep your head up and keep keep alert about your information when you're surfing on the internet. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out a Fire Dragon. I've loved it. I use boxes. It's been a nice, smooth, consistent feel. Every time I boot something up, it makes things easy. I'm gonna go right here. Let's go to HTOP. And right now we're running about 1.7 gigs of RAM. And remember, the reason is, is because right now at present, I am running OBS in the background on a second monitor. Now, Garuda Assistant, or Garuda Welcome, when you open it up, this meets you at every boot, unless you shut it off, then it won't, then you gotta go search it up. This Garuda Assistant right here has made things easy. What I have noticed is every time I do a system update, I've done it from right here, I've had no issues, zero. You can clear caches down here. You can clear package caches down here. I've been on this for 90 days now, and I have no issues at all. I have updated, and nothing has quit working. Everything stays smooth. Even about a month ago, when you had the uh, Grub update that really messed with some Arch installs, no issues here. Zero. I never skipped a beat. I panicked when I read that article online and I was like, oh no, should I update? Should I wait to update? And I'm not had any issues. It did not affect Garuda. I mean, at present, I'm running 5.19.8 Zen 1 1 Zen kernel. Uh, and it's just on an idea pad, Lenovo. I've got an old hard drive, uh, eight gigabytes of RAM. And I'm doing all my video editing. I'm doing all my picture editing. I'm doing all my thumbnail creation. I'm doing my business. I mean, guys, there's nothing I can say right now that would be sideways or bad about this operating system. Even when I was on Manjaro, even when I used Manjaro, 
every update it seemed like I had to redo something. I had to fix a theme or I had to get a, a application back to running. And I can't say that on Garuda. Now, doing content the way I do for Linux, I'm going to keep Garuda on a laptop. But at this moment in time, I've got to find something else to try to use as a daily driver. For the simple fact that if I'm going to do reviews about Linux and what's going on and what's out there, I've got to switch up. And that's where you guys come in. I'm going to need some suggestions. What do you guys think? What What is the next operating system I should give a shot and make my daily driver to see if I can use it on a daily basis and create my content for the YouTube channel. I'll put that in you guys' hands. Three months later, Garuda Linux, everything is simple. Everything is up and running. Everything is stable. I'm running dual monitors. Everything runs smooth. I'm just telling you guys. If you want to try an OS and you want to try something you haven't given a shot to yet, and especially if you haven't tried Arch, this makes things easy. I know this is Arch-based. It's not pure vanilla Arch. But if you're somebody that doesn't have the time to sit there and toy and tinker with an OS every day, Garuda has taken all those problems and made it real easy to run an Arch-based distro and made it easy for you to get work done in that Arch-based distro. So, what's my verdict after three months? Garuda Linux is still the best Linux experience I've ever had. Garuda Linux is still the most stable experience I've ever had. Garuda Linux is the most non-resource intensive experience I've ever had. And Garuda Linux, hands down right now, in my opinion, when it comes to Arch distributions, is the best Arch distribution out there. And that's comparing it against Manjaro, Endeavor. I know my comments will blow up. Endeavor's great. Endeavor is it, man. And it might be for you. But for me, this is what I, I like. Today, we're going to go over something that was brought up in the comments of my previous video, which was the Ultimate Lightweight Linux Distro. Before I started that video, I was actually on my Gecko desktop. And I had quite a few comments that said, how did you get your desktop to look like that? And it's rather easy and it's simple. So what I'm going to do today in this video is go over the steps that I took to make my desktop look the way it looks. Which, if I go ahead, I'm in GNOME Boxes. I'll go ahead and minimize OBS and minimize Boxes. And this is what my desktop looks like. I've got the panel down here floating. It's got the rounded corners and it's transparent. I've got a great wallpaper that I just got off of online. And what we'll do is we'll set this wallpaper to look just like the sign-in screen. That way, this matches what your sign-in and logout screen will look like. So, what we'll do is we'll zip back on over to GNOME Boxes. And I am presently in KDE Neon. Because it comes with the most up-to-date version of KDE Plasma. And we will go through the steps that I took to make my desktop look that way. So what I'm going to do right now is I'll go ahead and close out of Firefox. And right now we've just got a standard KDE wallpaper that comes with the system. And matter of fact, I'll go back to Firefox. I shouldn't have closed that out. And what we will do is we'll just go randomly find a beautiful wallpaper. So what we'll do is we'll go, what, HD wallpapers. Pull that up. We'll go to images and find us a good image to put on the background. Now, what I like to do as well, let's go ahead and open up our folder. Generally, what I do here is just create a new folder that basically states my wallpapers. Let's create a new folder, and I'll call it my wallpapers. And there we go. And we will go over here and find us a cool wallpaper. Now, what I want is something that's popping and comes out really nice. Let's do HD wallpapers, mountains, lake. Let's look that up. Let's find us a good looking wallpaper here. Let's go with something like that. And it's 2560 by 1440, so that'll work. Now let's open that in a new tab. And there it is right there. So what I'll do is I'll just right click and save as and go over to my home and my wallpapers and save it. 
Now, what you'll want to do is go ahead and close out of this. Go ahead and right click, configure desktop and wallpaper. Let's go ahead and add that image and go to my wallpapers, pick that and apply. Now, if you scroll all the way to the top, your picture will be at the top. Now, what it will do after you close out of this and open back up, whatever the name of it is, it'll be actually alphabetized down here and that's where you'll be able to find it. So let's go ahead and apply that one. And there is my wallpaper right there. Now, what do we do about the login screen? Well, that's where we go over here and open settings. And what I want you to do right here is go ahead and go to SDDM, which is your login screen. And right now you'll see that all we have is Breeze. Now, I want to get a different login screen. So what I'll do is go down here and get new SDDM themes and go to show highest rated and let it do its search and it'll bring up some really nice login screens. Now I do like the sugar candy login screen. That might be something that you all want to go with, but what I presently have on mine is this one right here, which is sweet. So I'm going to go ahead and install that and we will let that download. It is there now. So we have it right here. So what I want to do is go ahead and pick that one and apply it. Now, the next thing you want to do is come over here and see where it's got the little picture. Go ahead and click that picture and it says no image selected. Let's load that from a file. Come over to my wallpapers. And it is now set, but you have to come down here and click apply. Now, I was going to show you what it looked like. Let's go ahead and shut down. But what KDE Neon does is it automatically logs you right back into the system when you log out. So you can't see that login screen. But now it shows it. So it just made a liar out of me. But that would be your new login screen right there. So let's just go ahead and hit enter. And it should take us back to the desktop. So now your wallpaper matches your login screen. And let's go ahead and close out of this. So you've got your wallpaper set. You've got your login screen matching that wallpaper. And I'm sorry it was showing smaller because it doesn't take my resolution from desktop and carry it over to the login screen. But if you've got it on your KDE, you'll be just fine. You won't have any issues. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to work on the taskbar. So what we need to do is come down here and just right click, enter edit mode, and go to more options. And then go to floating panel, click on that, and then just click out here and go up here and click close. And now you have a floating panel. Now, one of the things that bothers me about the floating panel right out of the box is that it doesn't have really rounded corners. And I like to have a darker theme and I like to have some transparency. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and go to settings. Let's go ahead and switch it over to dark and apply. So now we have dark. You can see that we have a little transparency down here. Now, this might work for some of y'all, but I like to have it just a little bit more transparent and I want to have different icons. So what we're going to do now is we're going to zip on over to appearance and right here are your themes. Now let's go to global themes, get new global themes, let that load up. And what you're going to want to do is do a search right here for lay in L A Y A N hit enter. And it'll bring up the lay in light. And this is the one you want the lay in look and feel theme. So let's go ahead and install that. Now what this will do is it'll download the desktop theme and it will also download the desktop icons, windows, everything like that. But I don't want to use the icons. I want to go with a different set of icons. So we'll let that finish downloading and it has finished. So let's go ahead and click use. And as you can see, you've got a different look to your windows. You've got transparency on your title bars now. And if you come down here, you've got smoother looking icons over here and you've got different icons over here. But I want to change these icons up a little bit. So what I want to do is go ahead and close out of this and take a look around. I like that. So let's go ahead and go to icons. And we've got these regular icons and these right here are the ones that download with the lay and look and feel theme. But we want to get new icons. So let's click on get new. And we're going to be looking for Nordz, N-O-R-D-Z-Y. Hit enter. 
and these Nord Z icons will pop up right here. Let's go ahead and install those. And it'll give you a big, long list. They're different colors. You can get them in purple, red, yellow. I'm just going to go with the Nordzy Scion Dark. And I'm going to install those. And now they have installed. So all we have to do is click on Use. And it will change your icons up. Let's go ahead and close out of this. Close out of that. And we will come down here. You can see that you've got a nice transparency on the panel here. You've got different icons. They're professional looking. I like that. I'm going to go ahead and right click on that and unpin because I don't use Discover. Now, if you're somebody that wants to have bigger icons, that's easy to fix. Just right click on your panel. Enter edit mode. And right here, you'll see panel height. Plus, minus. Just go ahead and click on plus if you want those bigger. We can run them up there if you want to. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And close out of that. Now, that's pretty much the quickest way you can customize your desktop to give you a definite different feel. Now, if you come down here, you see that you get the lay-in icon for your application launcher. If that's not an icon you want, you can right click on it and configure application launcher. You can come up here and click on that icon and click choose and then scroll through all the icons that you have on your system and change that icon right there. Let's say you wanted to go with the bomber icon as your app menu icon. Just click on it and apply. And now you've got the bomber icon as your app menu. You can go up here. You can type things in too. If you want to see if there's KDE, there's a KDE right here. If you want to use that or maybe you want to use this. You've got several different options that you can do here. It makes things rather simple. Now let me show you something else. Let's go ahead and close out of that and close out of that. You can right click on there too and where it says edit applications you can click on that. You can come up here find any application that you have on your system. So let's go with Dolphin. Dolphin File Manager. Click on it and if you see over here it lets you know it's Dolphin File Manager but if you look to the right there's a little icon. You can click on that icon. Now if you want to change the Dolphin icon to something that you want or you just want to make it something different you can go through all these icons and change it from right here. So let's say we go with, uh, let's just do a cloud just to show you an example. You have that picked as your new dolphin icon. Once you have it picked, you just come over here and click save. And if you notice, the icon has changed to a cloud. I'm going to go ahead and change it back. Let's look up, I don't know if it's named dolphin. It is. Let's go ahead and click on that. And it's over here. And then always remember to click save or the changes won't take effect. Click save and it's changed back over here. Now if you close out of that and open this back up, you've got all these different icons. Now another thing I want to go over, last but not least, let's go up here to settings. Let's go to splash screen. Splash screen is right here. And you also have a boot splash screen right here. Now, if you go to splash screen, it'll show you presently what your splash screen is. Now, you can change this too. If you don't, if you just want the regular breeze theme where it boots with the KDE neon, you can have that. Or you can have the lay-in theme boot screen. Now, on either one of these, if you want to see what that boot screen looks like, just hit the play button. And it will pop up and show you what your boot screen is going to look like. Now, you can click with it anywhere in that while it's doing it to back out of it. If you wanted to see what Breeze looks like, just click on that. And it'll pop up and show you the Breeze splash screen. Let's go ahead and close. Now you can get a different splash screen if you want. Let's go ahead and click on Get New Splash Screen. And once you let these load up, you can also go up here. You can show the highest rated, so that way you'll find out what other people out there like and see if it's something you, you might like. You've got this. You've got the beautiful tree animation. You also have the KDE Plasma Linux for Open Minds splash screen. Let's just try something new here. Let's go ahead and let's pick this one. Install. It'll take just a little bit to download. And once it does, we can close out of this. And you can come down here and say, I want to pick this one right here and apply. And then you can click on it to see what it's going to play like. KDE Plasma. And it'll boot and show you right down here, Linux for Open Minds. 
So that is just a real quick way to customize KDE. I think we did that in less than 10 minutes. We all have different tastes. And I just wanted to do this video to show you how easy it is to make things look the way you want them to look. Don't be afraid. You can go in and make changes and everything is going to look good and it's going to look the way you want it. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. The more likes I get keeps me in YouTube's algorithm, which means the information you just saw in this video, if it was helpful to you, it can be helpful to somebody else. And subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, we are on three separate platforms, YouTube, Utreon, and Odyssey. And you can become members on all three. On YouTube, it's only 99 cents. On Utreon, it's $2.99. And on Odyssey, it's $4. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe go over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, Thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.